And now, it's time for another Dice Tower Review with Tom Vassell. Hey everybody, I'm Tom Vassell, and today we're taking a look at The City. Now interestingly, The City is a new game. It is uh, in the Eagle Griffin line, number 21. A line that was started a decade or so ago. Uh, but it's not a new game, it's an older game. And in fact, there exists a game out there already called Jump Drive, which was based on The City and now we have the city coming back out. Now I'll say this straight up: uh, I am not. I have not done a side-by-side -side comparison between Jump Drive and the City. I'm sure there's some differences between them, but they're very, 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 very similar. So if you've played Jump Drive, you essentially played the city. If you don't know what I'm talking about, no worries. The city is a game in which you're going to be building a city in front of you, trying to be the first one to get the 50 victory points, which it will seem on turn one is going to take about 50 turns, and then the game ends after eight turns. You'll see. Here's how it plays. In this game, players are using this mega huge deck here that has all sorts of cards in it. At the beginning of the game, you're going to draw seven discard two to a different discard pile, but you keep them face down so people don't know exactly what's there. There's some construction, general con contractors that anybody can build once per game. And players are going to, each turn of the game, do the same thing. You're going to look through the cards in your hand here. So I have five cards here, and I'm going to pick one, and simultaneously everyone's going to build the same one. The cost of each card has uh, other cards you'll discard from your hand. So I could build this one, discarding three. I could build this one, discarding two. I could build one of these, discarding one. So you know what? I'm just going to play through a little bit of a sample game here to show you how it works. Because I don't really need another player to show you. So for example, I'm going to build the housing tract first. This costs one card. I'm going to get rid of this construction crew. So I'll discard that and build this in front of me. Now, at the end of the turn, after everyone has built their cards, how many points does everyone get? Here, this gives me one point. So I take one point. You then check, does anyone have 50 points? Because if so, the game's over. Not even close, one point. Then everyone gets more income, which means you draw more cards. I have zero here, so this isn't so hot for me. I have only these cards, three cards left. Now, I do want to point out that if you can't do anything, you can do a general survey, which you can place one of these tokens down, draw five cards from the deck, and then discard four of them. So if you're desperate, you can do that, and sometimes you'll need to. However, I can play one of these too, so I'm going to play the fast food outlet. In this case, it gives me one card, so I'm going to draw one, but it says plus one with a housing tract. Not bad. So I'll put this one here, pay the two cards for it. Again, I get another victory point, so now I have two victory points, and then I get to draw two cards. Whew. Well, I can't build any of these this round, so instead, I'm going to have to build the general contractor for this round. Cannot be built after you build a construction crew or factory. No problem. That's just going to give me an extra card. Again, I'm going to score a victory point for the round. I only have three victory points, not a lot, but now I'm drawing three cards. Well, now I have a lot more options. I could build this office building. That's a point and a card. This one here, this says that cards with fountains on them cost one less. And this gives me a point and it gives me a card for every fountain I have. I don't have any fountains. The movie theater gives me a lot of icons and income. This monument gives me eight points per turn. Pretty awesome, but I need nine cards and I don't have it. So I guess at this point in time, I think the best thing to do is to build the Civic Center, because it says these cards cost minus one. Um, maybe, I don't know, the office. We're going to build the Civic Center for now. So I'm going to play this one down here. I'm going to discard these two cards to pay for it, the monument and the movie theater. And now I'm going to get two points per round. I'm up to five. It's still not a lot. And I get one card for every fountain. I don't have any. And then I get three more cards. So you can see I've done four turns so far. I'm going to look at these. Now fountain cards cost me one less. So this fountain card here is only going to cost me two. So that's going to be the card I play next. I'll play this one down here. Um, and now I'm going to get one, two, three points. So still not a ton of points, but you can see they're slightly going up. And then drawing cards. One per fountain. So that's two, three, four, five, six cards. One, two, three, four, five, six. Now you'll notice 
that in this game there's a hand limit of 12 at the end. But now that I have a lot of cards, I can build some nice big cards, including, ooh, I just drew this opera house here, which normally would cost eight, but my fountain cards cost one less. So this one's going to cost me seven. So I'm going to play that in front of me and discard uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven cards. Actually, I think I'm going to keep the uh, this one here. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I'm going to put these down here. And now, point-wise, I get one, two, three, plus eight, 11 points. Well, that's really changed things suddenly. I'm getting at 11 points. I already have six, seven, eight, so now I have 19 points. And I'm going to get another 11 points next round. And again, I'm going to draw one, two, three cards, because now I have three fountains. Four, five, six, seven. Four, five, six, seven. Well, this is pretty cool because now I can build this monument here, which is going to cost me nine, but I only need to pay eight for it. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I pay the rest of the cards in my hand, put this out, and that's worth eight points. Now I get 19 points on my turn. And then I'm going to draw one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. So I got a lot of points and 11 cards. And we'll keep going until someone gets 50 points. But as you can see, at this point, I have 16, 17, 18, 19 points coming per round. So it's only going to be a few more rounds before the game ends. First person to get to 50 will end the game. It's possible that multiple people will get to 50. And then whoever has the most cards left in their hand, plus their final income, is the winner. Actually, whoever has the most victory points wins. The tie it only happens if you both have, like, let's say, 56 points or something. So let's take a look at these cards here. There's a lot of symbols on the cards on the side. And at first I thought that might be confusing, but they're all very different in how they look and in their color. And they have different things. Like this gives you one victory point for every shopping cart. And it comes with two shopping carts, so it's at least two victory points. So as you're looking at these cards, you're trying to pick ones that are going to work. There's a lot of the same cards over and over in the deck. So you might be looking for a specific card. I don't know how many cards are in the deck, but the, the artwork in the background has kind of this fun modern deco type look to it and sometimes a specific card is needed to build another card so this one here says allows school that housing track that I built earlier in my game allows a school professional building and this strip mall I never actually drew any of those but if I wanted to play one of those I would need a prerequisite before you do it apartments will allow these different things and there's all there are so many different cards in this deck look there's a governmental center and the card quality itself is really well done. I do wonder why the... It feels like there's not a whole lot of information on these cards. So sometimes the stuff is maybe a little smaller than I would prefer. But I do like how it looks. And there's a few special effects on these. Uh, this one is two, but plus two if the university is in play. But overall, it's a pretty easy to play these cards. And the whole thing looks really, really nice. This is really the whole game. I mean, there's a pile of... Uh, victory point tokens and even some negative ones in case you lose points but for the most part the cards are the game. Escalation thy name is city. I mean this game you saw there right it's like one and two points three points 19 20 you know and it goes really fast and that's how every game of this I've ever played and if you don't get your engine working that quickly somebody else will and this is a really fast game now this game even though it came out before Race for the Galaxy, feels like a precursor to that game, feels like a simplified version of that, and it does. This is a very simple, easy game where I take some cards, sit there and go, this one seems the best, and once you take a few cards, you'll notice in my particular game I showed you, I started going for fountains. Hopefully you'll draw some fountains, of course. Um, but I could have gone for the auto symbols, and there's different things you can go for. Now you'll note, I played the game there by myself. That's the exact same way the game would be playing if I was playing with somebody else. The main difference is I would look and say, oh, they're also going for that symbol. Maybe I'll go for something else. But there's really not a ton of interaction between the players. You're just drawing and trying to score as quickly as you can. Uh, I, I like the game. I like how it works. It's very simple and easy. Um, it is a bit solitaire-ish, but it plays pretty well. 
As I said at the beginning, it's pretty much the same as jump drive. So which one do I recommend? Again, having not done a side-by-side -side comparison between the two, I would say which theme interests you. You interested in building a modern city with this really beautiful artwork? Then get this one. If you like the space theme, get the other one. But they're both a really well done game. This is a nice way to show a game that's just super streamlined. Again, it, it's kind of a weird, almost a jolt. It's like a roller coaster. You're like, oh, this isn't so bad. That's how this is, you know. It's like, oh, I guess we're going to start building up and we're done. And I don't mind that. A fast, speedy game can be really useful sometimes. You can get caught up in income, drawing a ton of cards. Done not forgetting, hey, I also need to get points. But if you go for points too early, then you aren't getting enough cards to be able to play the bigger point cards near the end of the game. Either way, I like the fact that it's fast, simple, and you can play it over and over and over again. It's a really solid addition to this line of Griffin Games. Check it out, The City. It is kind of a boring name, though. Dice Tower Judgment approved! Thanks so much for watching another Dice Tower video. If you enjoy our videos, subscribe to the channel for more fun, comprehensive board game coverage. Also, consider joining us at one of our events. Come to Dice Tower Retreat, a small, intimate gathering where gaming is king. Join us for Dice Tower Cruise, the largest board game cruise. Attend Dice Tower West in Las Vegas for gaming fun on the West Coast, or Dice Tower East in Orlando in sunny Florida. Dice Tower Conventions, the friendliest gaming conventions on Earth. I'm Eric Summerer, and you've been watching The Dice Tower.